Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, your host and the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's show. Joining me on today's show is my guest, Ron Schneider, who's the Director of Corporate Governance Services for R.R. Donnelly Financial Services Group. Welcome, Ron. Thank you, T.K. Pleasure to be here. So um, we're going to talk about what matters most to investors. and. Your organization, R.R. Donnelly, conducted a survey with Stanford University and Equilar to take sort of a deep dive into uh, what was titled 2015 Investor Survey Deconstructing Proxy Statements, What Matters Most to Investors. And I understand that this was the second that you had done a subsequent survey and wanted to take a deeper dive. So tell us a little bit about the surveys and sort of um, who you targeted and then sort of some overview. Sure thing. And, uh, uh, you know, Donnelly works with many, many U.S. companies with respect to their proxy statements. And the, over the last few years, the traditional relationship between the client and the printer was starting to change, whereas traditionally it was, here is our document, please print it, file it, deliver it where it has to be. Uh, which is still certainly a requirement, but increasingly more and more companies were asked, seeing what other companies were doing, changing their proxies from the traditional disclosure document to a more communicative, more easily digestible selling or communicating piece, were, uh, and seeing what their peers were doing, or were asking us for our advice. Where should they start? Where's the low hanging fruit? And uh, I had in my uh, career as proxy solicitor before joining Donnelly, had a fair amount of contact with institutional investors and clients and heard what they were looking for in proxies, what they, how they read them, where they found them deficient. And so we felt it would be useful to get some data. And so uh, in 2013, we conducted an initial survey which, uh, I, of institutional investors. We spoke to the proxy voters or governance heads from the largest under assets under management on down in the U.S. And that clearly identified that for most investors at most companies, it's about compensation, and most of what they're looking for is in the CDNA section. Uh, and so that caused us to uh, want to do a deeper dive, as you said, into compensation in the follow-on survey. And for that, we felt we could not have had two better partners than Equilar, the uh, compensation data firm, and Stanford University's Rock Center for corporate governance. So together, we broadened the scope of the initial survey. We all contributed questions. We uh, jointly uh, requested that investors complete it. And we ended up uh, getting thoughtful answers from 64 asset owners or managers uh, with a combined uh, 17 trillion in assets under management. So uh, for almost any public company, a certain number of their top 10 investors spoke to us through the survey. Well, you couldn't ask for two better partners um, as far as taking a deeper dive, both of which uh, have a ton of information and uh, certainly would be good partners. One of the things, first of all, I found the, the survey very interesting. One of the things that I found particularly interesting was um, the comments about the summary, okay, and how important a proxy summary is. Now, I know companies that still don't do a summary okay on their proxy which sort of surprises me at this point but um, one of the statistics in there was that 32 percent um, on average admitted that they only read about 32 percent of the proxy in total okay so that even puts more pressure back on the summary so um, talk a little bit about what you guys found out related to that summary, and then we'll, we'll show them how you sort of 
have a great uh, comparison tool to, to help them with this. Sure thing. Well, you know, over the last couple of decades, the average annual meeting proxy statement has ballooned from an average of 25 pages two decades ago to it's an average of 80 pages for the uh, uh, S&P 1000. And I don't think anyone would be shocked that institutional investors owning 3,000 or more U.S. companies, many of whom with annual meetings in a very compressed uh, proxy season in the spring, and having perhaps two to four person engagement and voting teams aren't going to be able to read 80 pages for every uh, company. Uh, and one of the concerns that companies have shared with us is that are, are they going to read the, the, the most important information in our proxy among the 80 pages, or are they going to just default and pay more attention to the 12 to 15 page proxy advisor kind of cliff notes report? And so I think that the concerns about readership, uh, concerns about, uh, you know, are, are they going to, how they're going to treat the proxy versus other informational sources has caused companies to start using summaries. These could be proxy summaries at the beginning of the document or CDNA executive summaries at the beginning of that section or both. And in fact, uh, 2011 was the first time I started noticing a handful of companies putting in proxy summaries. And I don't think it's coincidental that that was the first year of mandatory say on pay for most U.S. companies. And, and these were basically the, the governance leaders that we look to traditionally for inspiration and guidance. And most of these companies reported to us and publicly that they didn't just come up with these ideas out of the blue, that they had been engaging with their investors on these issues for a number of years and understood what they were looking for and what would make the document more digestible. And, but TK, I don't think it's all about just having a summary or not having a summary because uh, a lot of it has to do with navigation. Is the content in a 70-page proxy easily found? There are still companies that don't even have a table of contents showing where you can find key information. Um, and of the summaries that I've seen, I see three major types. There are what I would call navigational summaries where they briefly uh, recite, here's what you can find in this document and here's where we discuss that further. There are more argumentative summaries where they make their best case why investors should support their proposals. And then there are change. We've recently made these changes um, uh, based on either feedback or evolving best practices. We want you to be aware of some of the changes we've made uh, recently. Now, in reality, most summaries are a combination of those. So when a company asks us, should we put in a proxy summary, we first ask them, well, what is your objective? Is it something that can't be accomplished through a clear, easily navigated CDNA executive summary? Quite often the answer is yes. It's just we wouldn't want companies to put in summaries merely to check off the box and say, we now right. have a summary. Well, one of the things that um, was interesting to me, um, and one of the reasons I wanted to have you as a guest, is you guys produce a proxy guidebook, okay? And as is standard practice, when some of the leaders in the governance business um, start a, a positive trend, okay? Everybody goes out under the internet or, or whatever, tries to gather information on um, you know, what the leaders are doing, what, what's GE doing, what's you know, some of these companies that are always looked to. Well, you guys have said, okay, we're gonna make this easier. You've collected all that information you know, for 150 plus years. I don't know how exactly how old our, our Donnelly Last is. Last year was Donnelly's 150th anniversary as, so, a, as a company. Um, um, yeah. I know they've been around as long as I've been alive, but. Um, <laughs> and then some. Yeah, so, um, but when I first saw that guidebook, it, I, I saw how useful it was. Each section you guys took and sort of said, here's a best practice on making sure uh, that you are communicating what the directors have said, or I'm sorry, what the investors have said um, we want to see, and then creatively how some companies have in turn attract that. Talk a little bit about why that's been such a good tool for you and why it can help the rank and file company with their proxy. Sure. Uh, the companies, the majority of companies look to what other companies are doing uh, and they see if they can apply these evolving best practices to their story. There's really only a handful of companies 
that want to be entirely innovate and even take risks in terms of trying something new that's never been done before. And, and they offer a, a lot of inspiration to other companies. But most companies traditionally uh, look at what their peer companies have been doing, look at what the governance leaders have been doing uh, and the likes. Uh, and if they've been engaging with their investors uh, based on the feedback they've received, well, how can we better meet their informational needs? And uh, they've always asked Donnelly, hey, can you show us a few really interesting proxy statements? So sure, we'd bring a half dozen really nice looking proxy statements, but you know, it depends what is a company looking to accomplish. And so uh, since we work with about 1,900 US companies each year and, and our client base thankfully includes many of these very creative governance leaders, we thought we should kind of catalog some of the more interesting sections, topics, or features that we've seen. The first version two years ago was 28 pages. Okay, It focused on proxy summaries, CDNA executive summaries, how companies are portraying their director nominees and highlighting, let's say, skills and qualifications and not just having that buried in part of a very long bio paragraph. And the feedback we got from the users was this was extremely helpful. We've been waiting for something like this, but can you do a deeper dive into compensation? We'd like to see more graphical and less uh, textual CDNAs. Uh, and um, so th the second and third version, you've seen the third version, reflects that. It's now 10 times the length of the first version. And each year, uh, we add more topics. This past year, we added internal pay equity. Some companies are discussing that, even if they're not putting a pay ratio figure out there yet, which a handful of companies are. Uh, how the board is describing board oversight of, of risk. Uh, there's many boilerplate uh, 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 textual uh, descriptions. There's many that are clearly very thoughtful and company specific, and there's some that are even visual, showing which uh, risks are managed primarily by the full board versus which committee, uh, and, and uh, description how companies are showing engagement, feedback obtained, and changes they've made in response to that. So we keep looking forward on you know, what are the evolving issues. As a result, it does get longer. Um, there's nothing in the guide that can't be found at sec.gov. However, it might not be found. That's right. the best way I can put it. So what we did is we took the part of sec.gov that we're familiar with, our client base, and we've cataloged it instead of by company, but by section, topic, or feature. And as you said, it largely corresponds to the areas that investors in the survey and through other means have indicated are important to them. And many companies that have not yet effectively engaged with their investors, haven't received that feedback directly, uh, have found that it's, it's a real good shortcut for them to not copy what they see other companies are doing, but how can they highlight key information effectively? And it gives them guidance and inspiration that they can apply to their next effort. Well, it just made perfect sense to me if I'm a corporate secretary or IRO or a head of a uh, chairman of the comp committee who has responsibility for signing off on the CDNA, the way you guys have categorized that is really worth, you know, somebody taking the time to uh, review that. So, um, as you know, I don't take those um, sort of endorsements lightly, um, but I really thought that this was good value versus the time that it takes to go in and try and track all this stuff down sort of independently, well, so. Thank you, I can tell you in May, I'll be spending at least three weeks rereading many proxies and reading others for the first time to identify candidates for the next version of the guide. So right. it's good to hear that that time is well spent. Yeah. So let's talk about all the things that we've talked about are sort of the proxy, you know, the ability to make sure that you meet with the investors. Well, all that sort of gets wrapped up in this sort of nice little package called shareholder engagement, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to tell you how prominent that is as an issue these days, and it only becomes more prominent as time goes on. So um, you're somebody that has lived this world about communicating with a shareholder. So what advice might you offer, you know, at this point to companies that are trying to enhance their shareholder engagement? Well, the survey is kind of engagement by survey, but I would never have anyone um, consider that more valuable than direct engagement between themselves 
whether performed by management or the board, because there are different circumstances where those make sense, uh, with their uh, investors. But, and we know that the majority of our clients have not yet effectively engaged with their investors on these issues. Some tell us we tried, we reached out, we didn't have any bad voting issues, but we wanted to establish this best practice. We reached out, BlackRock, for example, was our largest investor, and they said, we have no issues with your company at this time, no need to engage. And so that may be comforting, but it's not very enlightening. So we thought we would do some of this research ourselves. I, I will say that eventually, uh, most companies will make a significant effort at engagement. The question is, when are they gonna do it? We know they're gonna do it after a poor or failed say on pay vote, when they wanna figure out who voted how, why, because it's not always for the same reason, and therefore what they should consider doing about it. Uh, and uh, and if a company is confronted with an activist threat, they're certainly gonna be telling their best board and corporate governance story if they're not already. Uh, so, and, and a lot of the post-meeting feedback is very helpful to companies, but my feeling is wouldn't it be more helpful if they had some of that same insight before they draft the proxy, when they still have decisions they can make about what they're gonna emphasize in their messaging, how they're gonna make it easy to find key information. So basically, I, th I think companies are gonna engage sooner or later, is it gonna be proactive or reactive? And yeah. I would certainly urge proactive. Yeah, if you're um, waiting to contact your shareholders after you've lost the vote, you've probably missed the point of shareholder engagement to make sure that you're touching um, reaching out ahead of critical right. votes like you that. You will get very detailed feedback, but sure, when is information most helpful yeah. up front? So, uh, Ron, probably the big issue is, here's the guide, here's the survey. Uh, survey. How can our viewers get a copy of either of these things um, that would, um, in other words, how, how can they easily get a copy? Okay. Uh, these are available uh, for free, certainly, uh, at the R. Donnelly website under the financial uh, services. And I think you may be showing links. We're going to put okay. up links put on links. the screen. Okay. There are links that you can go to directly. Uh, also, anyone can uh, feel free to email me, and I will be happy to send it to you right away. And my email is ronald.m.schneider, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R, at rrd.com. Well, Ron, thank you very much. Again, this is very helpful. I was very impressed, not only in the survey, but most specifically in the guidebook. I think that's going to save people a lot of trouble. So thank you for joining us today. And that will conclude this edition of, of Inside America's Boardrooms. Uh, we hope that you'll join us next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.